हेलो एवरीवन आई एम हिमांशु शुक्ला वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ एनालिटिका एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर एनकरेजिंग रिस्पॉन्सेज आई आई गॉट वेरी गुड रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम यू ऑल मेनी ऑफ यू हैव ड्रॉप मी अ मैसेज यू हैव पिंग मी यू हैव आस्ड योर डाउट्स यू हैव सेंड योर आंसर्स एंड मेनी थैंक यू मैसेजेस फॉर द वीडियो फॉर द इनिशिएटिव सो that's very encouraging and uh, the uh, it has been amazing response from you all and i'm sure that you all must have got benefited from it and you all must have got to know that how to approach uh, the thought line the uh, how to how to process the ideas how to prioritize the points you must have uh, got to know all those things so keep utilizing this initiative for your betterment for your uh, uh, better answer writing better case studies okay so this is first thing second update is that uh, from now on uh, i will come up with two videos the same two case studies but two videos in a week so mostly one will be first video will be on tuesday uh, and second video will be on friday so i have divided one case study in one video so that the video length will be less and whenever you are traveling or you are eating or you are walking so you can watch the video in your leisure time but before watching the video in leisure time you have to write that video uh, case study you it's you should not simply listen it otherwise you are not going to benefit from it you have to uh, read the case studies you have to approach the case studies at least brainstorm or if uh, maximum you should do write the case studies if not then at least brainstorm okay then only listen the video okay first you understand the case study from your point of view so the video will be there will be two videos one on tuesday one on friday uh, mostly i will upload it uh, on uh, at 10 am around 10 am so use that fixed timing fixed number of days i am announcing and i am keeping it so that it will help you in better predictability and answer writing so you can uh, choose that how to plan your uh, rest of the week schedule okay so this is uh, one update from my side now let's start with the case study today so today we are taking question number 9th of uh, this year's mains paper gs4 paper csc mains 2020 question number 9th that is our case study today so this case study presents a scenario of uh, poverty it's present a scenario of uh, uh, regional backwardness it's present a scenario where youths are migrating for better employment opportunity it also presents a scenario where child labor has been evolved okay and uh, there is a, uh, a related health issues which is happening because of this child labor uh, uh, that is also in uh, in the uh, uh, presented in the case study also ngos are not functioning properly they are not performing their role uh, which they are supposed to do in the democracy mining is happening in the area but uh, again it is not contributing to any development of the region rather development is being ignored welfare programs are not helping the tribal people in the region though they are designed for that but they are not helping so we should uh, that that is the case uh, scenario so overall what is happening this case study is presenting a scenario where economic justice and social justice both economic justice and social justice are being compromised so they are being compromised so these are the challenges which we have discussed now coming to the stakeholders how to analyze this case study the before jumping to the uh, question uh, the question is saying that uh, this is the scenario which i have discussed you are appointed as a district collector now you have to analyze the ethical issues involved and uh, after analyzing the ethical issues you have to suggest specific steps for the problems which are there in the case study that is one of the problem is child labor is happening so that how to resolve that problem of child labor how to ameliorate the conditions of minor girls in your district and second question is that how to improve the overall economic status of the district in the district so before jumping into the case study before jumping to how what to write what not to write first we will see the stakeholders involved in the case study okay so who are the stakeholders so this is stakeholders first stakeholder tribal people so when we talk about tribal people uh, in tribal people who are the people here the first is uh, youth so youth 
is migrating. So youth is there, then minor girls are there. Then remaining population. In remaining population, we have uh, parents. We have vulnerable sections like old age people and women are there. Okay. Then second stakeholder, you have uh, NGOs are stakeholders. Third, uh, the co uh, labor contractors and uh, uh, BT cotton farmers are there. Next, we have government, you as a DC and overall government functionaries, uh, machineries are involved. So they are also one of the stakeholder. Who else is there? In the case of study, who else is your uh, uh, stakeholder? Mining industries are uh, stakeholder, one of the uh, stakeholders. Mining industries are one of the stakeholders. Okay. Now, after analyzing the stakeholders, why we are noting down the stakeholders? Because it helps you in analyzing the next part of the question. The next part of the question is that analyze the ethical issues involved in the case studies. When we analyze case studies, how to think from multiple dimensions, how to think that, uh, 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 that we do not leave any, any of the ethical issue. Okay, so for that we need these stakeholders. These stakeholders help in thinking from everyone's point of view. We will think that what all ethical issues are involved, and if if we are missing anything or not. Okay, so that that's how you should think, and you have to discuss. Now, before jumping to the ethical issues involved in the case study, there is a homework for you all. Okay, so go back to school days, getting homework, getting assignments, even in college days you used to get. So let us take one homework from my side. So this homework is that you have to analyze three problems from your district which you think is uh, are problematic for your district. So those three problems you have to mention, you have to analyze first and then you collect those problems, think about them. Prioritize when you will become a DC, then how and what will be your priority to solve those problems? Okay, then think of the solutions as well. So, this will also help you in empowering with the how to write the case studies. Not only that, it will also help you in thinking about your district. So, this question has been asked time to time uh, in every year in interview. The panel will ask these questions from the candidates, interview candidates that okay, uh, Mr. X, Mr. Y, Ms. Y. Tell me three problems for your, from your district or three problems of India which you as a DC or as an IS officer will uh, prioritize and solve and how will you solve. So think it and uh, I want the responses in the comment section from all of you those who are watching and uh, let us see that uh, what all problems are there and which district. So let us analyze. It will be very interesting. So do participate then only it will be a fun. Uh, I will wait for your responses. I will go through the comment section. So this is your first homework. Now coming to ethical issues. Ethical issues involved in the case studies. Okay. So quickly we will discuss the ethical issues. Here I will give pointers to you for thinking. So the first case, uh, ethical issue according to me in this case, is, uh, case study is violation of constitutional values. We will analyze five to six case uh, ethical issues. So here what is happening constitution promises for uh, inclusive growth. It promises for the overall development of the region, uh, overall development of the people also. So that is being ignored. That is letting or causing the problem of marginalization of the tribes that is happening. Okay, So that is one thing. Also the constitutional values are at stake. Fundamental right that is uh, under article 21 we promise uh, uh, there is a right to life, right to a dignified life that is being compromised. Okay, So first ethical issue is that how to promise or how to uphold our constitutional values that is one ethical issue. Second ethical issue is involved at the level of political ethics. How and what? So we will see. So here what is happening, you know, we know that uh, when government functions, there is a kind of social contract between the government authorities and citizens. Basically the government, that is politicians, they are representative, they are political representative appointed by us. So there is a social contract, okay, we are giving you power, you have to rule, you have to form the policies and you have to analyze the things, you have to frame laws and all. 
So here what is happening? There is a failure of government machineries and its machine, uh, government and its machineries in this case study. It is leading to, as we discussed, uh, it is leading to uh, uh, the social justice and economic justice are not being upheld. So due to where the, uh, there is a delay of social justice, uh, health problems, education problems, overall development is not happening. Economic justice not happening, how regional uh, backwardness is there, economic development not happening in the region. So there is a failure. So it is leading to a kind of trust deficit. So thus the political ethics has been compromised. In the last case study, in the previous analytical video, we have seen that there is one sin which we mentioned and discussed about that is politics without principle was one of the sin given by, uh, one of the seven sin given by Gandhiji. So use such concepts here, think on those lines. Third, third is on the, uh, the ethical issue is uh, that voice to voiceless is being compromised. Here we, are, we have seen in the case study that NGOs are not performing. NGOs are not performing their role. NGOs, they are considered as the fifth pillar of the democracy. They are considered as a bridge between the government and the people. So they act as the, they provide the platform to, uh, to the people, like marginalized people, people from the weaker section, that is tribal people. So they act as voice for the voiceless people. So they are not performing their duty, they are not performing their commitment or their responsibility which they are supposed to do. Okay, thus what is happening? Widening of inequality is happening. Inter and intragenerational inequity is happening. So you will write all those things here. So this is uh, with respect to the third issue. Fourth issue, there is a kind of misappropriation of fund or violation of law is happening. So fourth issue is that misappropriation of fund and violation of law. Okay, so how uh, violation of law is happening because under Child Labor Act, we know that anyone, uh, if uh, we are employing a child less than uh, of 18 years old in hazardous activities, that is not allowed. Okay. And here, uh, the uh, minor girls, they are facing the health issues and that to BT cotton is involved. It is uh, one of the genetically modified crop. Okay. So this is the uh, problem here. Uh, wh what is happening? So violation of law here, child, uh, the provisions of the Child Labor Act has been compromised, first thing. And Above all, there has been no mechanism from our, uh, from the uh, uh, the authorities, the district administration or the uh, law and administration authorities, law and order authorities, that is police and all. There has been no mechanism to check this violation. So there, it, it is a failure of our criminal justice system. Misappropriation of fund, we have this provision under Minerals and Mines Act, MMDR Act 1957 to set up the provision, uh, uh, district mineral fund. So if the in a development is not happening means that fund either has been not uh, established or set up or the fund if it is there then it has been misappropriated by the authorities. Also under CSR activities companies act uh, 2013 there is a provision that uh, there, uh, the CSR acti activity has to be done by the companies. If that is also not happening because the development is not visible, it means that the funds either have been uh, misappropriated or the companies have not done any activities under CSR. So think on those lines. What are the legal provisions are there? What uh, compulsions are there which uh, legal compulsions are there and how they are being violated? Next, fifth issue. Fifth issue is of uh, related to welfare scheme lack of accountability and transparency mechanism. We have seen the case study saying that uh, the welfare schemes are not performing up to date or they are not, uh, they have not given any results. So it shows that they are inefficient. It shows that their poor implementation of welfare scheme is happening, which means there is lack of accountability and transparency mechanism. No social audit, nothing is happening. All right. So you have to think you have to consider that aspect as well. Next case study, next, uh, sorry, ethical issue. Next ethical issue is that here humans are being treated as ants in themselves. This is a sixth case study, sixth ethical issue, sorry. 
we know gandhi ji told that humans must be treated as end in themselves but here we are treating humans as a means to achieve something the minor girls for their pleasure for the uh, profitability for the uh, since the hands are soft the fingers are soft for plucking so for business aspect they are thinking right but they are not thinking from their point of view they are not thinking from the legal point of view they are using humans as a means so that is an ethical concern that human should be treated as means or human should be treated as and as an end in themselves this is an ethical issue next uh, there is a kind of forced migration uh, psychological burden is happening i will explain psychological burden and forced anything we are forcing so this migration is not natural this alienation is not natural there is a forced migration happening of youth from uh, in uh, uh, looking for the employment opportunities so this forced migration or alienation is uh, causing a kind of psychological burden where psychological burden for the families who are staying who are left out at the village or uh, uh, wherever uh, the tribes were staying and the students sorry youth which has migrated for them it is a psychological burden because they are staying alone away from their family members in the at the workplace it can be a city or anywhere not only that it is also causing the problem where the unique tribal culture is being lost they the tribal people they are losing their culture a sense of community is being lost so it is not right and that is not naturally happening that is being forced because there is a failure failure of ngos there is failure of government functionaries there is failure of uh, lack of development there is failure of uh, industries in doing their responsibilities so if it is forced then it is eth ethical concern if it has been natural then no worries no problem okay so this is it with respect to the ethical issues we have discussed uh, seven ethical issues here okay okay fine now coming to the next question i will erase it if you have not gone through it pause the video and then see that what all we have discussed and written next ethical issue uh, ethical issue we have discussed let's jump to the next part of the question the next part of the question is saying that which specific steps will you initiate to ameliorate the conditions of minor girls so first we will discuss about minor girls second they are discussing about what all the steps will you take for the overall economic growth so for overall economic growth we will discuss the steps okay one by one we will discuss for the minor girls whenever you are thinking any any solution for anything think from short term point of view and medium to long term point of view it will help you in uh, prioritizing the points so for short term what you will do for short term you will go and first you will withdraw them from the fields so one is short term other is medium to long term okay short term first and foremost thing will be done is that we will go and we'll uh, withdraw them from the field and uh, we will rehabilitate them okay so uh, to some uh, child welfare department or uh, we will take the help of ngos that will be uh, done second immediate thing which we have to do is that immediate checkup general health checkup has to be done and then since it is something related to occupational hazard uh, and uh, uh, there is there is a issue of handling unprocessed cotton so we will do uh, with the help of the uh, the health officer of the district that is cmo we will go for the screening of uh, this lung disorder bicinosis uh, by cyanosis we will go for uh, we will uh, go for the screening of this uh, disorder that maybe if the uh, the child are suffering from that or not okay then also uh, psychological counseling will be done uh, with respect to the that what kind of uh, mental frame they are going through they are uh, they have lived in uh, very poor living conditions and they are also going through the health uh, health related issues uh, they are facing so psychological counseling will be also provided to the uh, uh, minor girls so one is their withdrawal 
सेकेंड इज जनरल चेकअप थर्ड इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ऑक्यूपेशनल हजार्ड स्क्रीनिंग विल बी डन फॉर द लंग डिसऑर्डर विच वी डिस्कस देन देयर साइकोलॉजिकल काउंसलिंग विल बी डन दीज आर शॉर्ट टर्म एंड इमीडिएट इमीडिएट स्टेप्स टू बी टेकन ओके ऑल्सो अंडर शॉर्ट टर्म एंड दैट विल बी इमीडिएट वी हैव टू गो फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन दैट वाई दिस प्रॉब्लम हैपन इन्वेस्टिगेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी कल्परेट्स हु हैव वॉयटेड दी the child labor act and there will be a vigilance set for the future and the culprits will be held accountable and will be punished so that will be also immediate or, or your short term goal a step rather in the long term or medium to long term we will uh, first focus on that how to avoid that uh, the girls should not go back to the uh, fields again so we will rope in the ngos because ngos also here are in question that what are they doing they are not doing anything Uh, or uh, they have they are not doing their duty or uh, responsibility so uh, the responsible ngos will be roped in for providing education health facilities and uh, skill vocational training to the minor girls so that uh, they don't go back to the they will be not trapped in this employment uh, of the uh, bt cotton plucking of uh, cotton flowers then we'll make sure that first is uh taking in loop the ngos second is taking uh, in loop the uh, ngos for health and education the, uh, second not to repeat such thing so for not repeating such thing what we will do we will uh, make sure that uh, proper uh, counseling is given to the parents okay that under the uh, we will make them aware under the uh, uh, the provisions of the child labor act that it, uh, the only contractor will be not punished also if you violate the law you will be also punished so we will counsel them will make them aware will create awareness so awareness regarding the law will be done okay uh, on the lines of community policing we can go for community informers that if such things have are being violated community informers will inform the district administration in in this case they will respond to you also third point that periodics uh, periodic supervision and uh, surprise raids on the cotton fields should be done so that rangi haath pakad le unko if some things are going on and overall the root cause of the problem that is poverty and uh, developmental uh, activities which are the lack of development is there that has to be addressed we will see next that how to address the overall economic development okay so this is it with respect to the uh, helping the minor girls also there was a case study where uh, one textile industry was involved in uh, uh, it was involved in child labor and this uh, news this information came on the facebook so the buyers the consumers they started boycotting th that textile company so it was a kind of shaming it was a kind of uh, uh, boycotting that uh, uh, textile industry so this ultimately resulted in positive thing that they avoided uh, this child labor and uh, it affected their brand image so ultimately if that will not happen what i will do i can adopt this social media also to create some this uh, shaming kind of thing which will uh, create awareness among people and they will boycott such things so we have discussed here uh, in medium to long term we have discussed five to six steps which uh, you should think upon and write next next question is saying that what all steps we will take so first step for overall economic development should be education okay i hope you all are following the uh, very popular initiative of uh, insights that is ignite at insights program insights ignite at insights initiative where we call people from different walks of life and uh, they they give us different ideas from they, they share their story they share their uh, work with us so that it will ignite our thought process so i hope you are following that so there we discussed we our, one of our guest was uh, mr op choudhury he he was uh, he, he was is officer from chatisgarh so sir has highlighted in that discussion or in that uh, when you will read about him his work so in the field of education in the tribal belt and naxal area he has done lot of initiatives like nanne parinde chulo asman pota cabin so such initiatives were tribal specific and for their education needs so on those lines you can uh, think and address that how to uh, 
address the education educational needs of the uh, tribal people in their language keeping in mind their language keeping in mind their requirement their vocational training and all that second thing will be skill development so skill development why it is important skill development is important because employability so that youth will not migrate we can train them in their own traditional craft we can uh, form cooperatives we can form self help groups right so skill development we can utilize the facilities under uh, under uh, pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana that can be utilized also we can tie up with the uh, firms or institutions like trifed we can tie up with uh, amazon we, we can uh, create or form mahila e hearts mahila hearts mahila e hearts which will uh, uh, sell these products we can go on commercializing uh, or uh, product diver uh, uh, product diversification also so skill development we discussed third thing which we are discussing was expanding market reach expansion of market basically expanding market so there we were discussing that technology can be a tool where amazon trifed mahila hearts can be roped in there we can go for product diversification here tribal jewelry uh, for that matter tribal painting potteries uh, dress and weaving then uh, minor forest produce like honey and bamboo based products can be diversified for expanding the market of that region okay then next step is with respect to the funding so here what we will do funding for funding we will see what are the avenues in front of us that region is mineral rich region so mineral if it is a mineral rich region we have to focus on sustain sustainable extraction where not only we should ignore private people private people should uh, be invited rather and we have to see that rights of the tribal people should not be violated they should be rather participated in uh, the overall decision making it should be informed consent first thing it should be uh, based on uh, their rights or their participation so we have to keep in mind their participation tribal rights and uh, informed consent so here there is under as we have discussed under the mmdr act that mines and minerals uh, development and regulation act 1957 there is a provision of dmf so that fund from district mineral fund can be used for overall development of roads of the region area development we can use bridges hospitals education uh, for that matter uh, uh, your uh, roads and all so that can be done funding can come from dmf and csr activities on the same lines under companies that csr activities will be roped in for the overall development of the region so that can be also done next focus on the overall development will be on agriculture so here we have seen that agriculture is sub of uh, uh, we are practicing um, uh, this uh, subsistence agriculture so we have to focus that agriculture has to be tribal specific sustainable agriculture practices should be adopted and not only that there is a problem of a small land holding so land pooling uh, should be encouraged and uh, provision should be made for that quality inputs time to time be it with respect to seeds or water we have to district administration has to take care of that as well food processing with respect to the minor forest produce that is uh, honey can be done then northeast uh, in northeast tribes uh, have this practice of, uh, practice of uh, brewing uh, wine and all so that knowledge traditional knowledge can be used in popularizing that product also we have examples from andhra pradesh where cooperatives are uh, doing very good work in giving good market to the tribal produce and not only benefiting the tribes but also expanding the market of the forest produce minor forest produce or the tribal agri agriculture produces also if required we can look for commercial avenues from that region if if it is possible so that is under agriculture so on these lines uh, these five to six steps are there which we will discuss in detail and uh, we will mention that what can be done we can also look for one avenue that is tourism so this tourism how it will help let's say nowadays we come across tribal festivals like hornbill festival or wangla festival of uh, meghalaya so on the same lines we can popularize the uh, fairs and festivals of the that particular tribe 
we can uh, popularize uh, it uh, for the employment it will give employment to the people of the region it can be a regular affair of uh, popularizing their art dances cuisine and traditional medicines practice medicinal practices if any so that can be also one of the aspects so think on those lines whatever we read in newspaper that we have to use here okay so that's it with respect to the second part of the question okay now second homework basically you have to take the help of the uh, examples or how can you think of these solution you can think of this solution when you read about the IS officers, IPS officers or in general civil servants. What good work even IRS officers are doing good work in uh, solving the water issues in their district and all. So you have to think, you have to collect such examples where you will read that what people are doing and how officers are uh, resolving this problem of education in the tribal belt of uh, employability of uh, uh, promoting tourism and all so the second homework is that you have to collect such examples and in comment section you have to put uh, the those examples you have to write that examples that which is officer what a work they have done believe me that uh, i don't know like uh, in last video 6000 people have watched so even if 6000 people comment let's say there will be multiplicity of example so at least you will get some good 10 to 20 examples if i am not wrong right so use this uh, homework concept do this uh, second homework you will come up with lot of good examples i will wait for your examples okay so this is it for the today uh, for the this video uh, next video i will upload on friday at 10 am okay so thank you so much bye bye take care utilize the video for your uh, writing and do write okay and uh, let's grow together bye bye take care thank you